So in the previous video, we talked about all the enzymes which we really need for or which are required for the process of DNA replication. Now we are starting with the actual process. The first step is activation of nucleotides. Activation of nucleotides. And here we are talking of DNA nucleotide. Now these DNA nucleotides, they are of four types. Containing four different nitrogen bases. That's, that is A, T, C and G. And these nucleotides, as they have a pentose sugar, a nitrogen base and one phosphate group, they are monophosphates. So we write it as AMP, PMP, CMP and GMP. MP is for monophosphates. These are inactive nucleotides which are circulating all around in the nucleoplasm in case of eukaryotic cells and in cytoplasm of prokaryotic cells. And they are activated by phosphorylase. So the enzyme which is going to help here is phosphorylase. And all these monophosphates are converted into triphosphates. So it becomes ATP, TTP, CTP and GTP. So now these are the activated nucleotides. Activated nucleotides. Now, though we are writing this step number one and step number two and so on, but that doesn't mean that this takes place first and the next step follows it. Things are taking place simultaneously. That means when these are getting activated at the same time, there is opening up of the DNA helix is also taking place. So for our understanding, we have divided all the complete process into steps. Now step number two is opening of the DNA helix. Now when DNA helix opens, there are multiple steps again involved. The first step which is involved is recognition of the site of origin from where it is going to replicate. So it is recognition of the ORI site. ORI site is the site from where replication starts. It is a special nucleotide sequence which needs to be recognized. So first that ORI site from where the replication is going to start has to be recognized. In prokaryotes normally there is one ORI site but in case of eukaryotes there can be more than one ORI site also. This is step number one. Then Helicase binds at this ORI site and opens up the helix. It opens up the helix. Next step, the other two enzymes that is topoisomerase and single strand stabilizing proteins. What are they going to do? They will relieve the tension from this opened up helix and will hold or stabilize those two separated strands. So by these steps the helix opens up. Now here we need to understand that if we, we are talking about a linear DNA molecule, it may open from the tip. So in that case, the DNA opened up DNA is going to look like this. And again, we are drawing it for our convenience. This part of the DNA is going to be in the form of a helix. And this opened up part is known as replication fork. This is possible in case of a linear DNA, but if the DNA is a circular DNA, then the way we draw the circular DNA is 
these are the two strands which are there and the place where these two strands open up we find that there is a separation a wide separation between the two strands this separated part is known as replication bubble so if it is a circular dna we are going to see something which is called a replication bubble the place where the two dnas are going to get separated and in case of a linear one we are going to see a replication fork this is what is opening up of the dna helix now let us understand few more things before we take up the next step we know that these two strands of dna are anti parallel this is third prime that is the third carbon is free here the same strand at the other end will have the fifth carbon free and the strand which is in front of it the complementary strand will have the third prime free here and fifth free here our next step is going to be formation of the primer but before we take that up we need to know that why this primer is required and where this primer will be formed primer or we can even write that step here so that while understanding the structure we can also write those things so that becomes our step number 3 that is primer formation and the enzyme which is required for this is our dna directed rna polymerase and this primer is a small segment of rna nucleotide maybe 6 7 8 8 nucleotides rna nucleotides so if this is what we are talking of as a primer the primer has one end where the third carbon is going to be free and the other end which is going to be the fifth carbon free that means whether we are talking of dna or rna it shows that polarity one end has oh free the other end has phosphoric acid or phosphate group free here also this rna primer which we have drawn here has a third carbon free and a fifth carbon free we know that at carbon number 3 there is a functional group this is the third carbon and at the fifth carbon there is a phosphate group free so this is the fifth one <coughs> oh is the functional group if a new nucleotide has to come and bind this piece the new bond can be formed wherever there is a functional group so now if a new nucleotide say this is a dna nucleotide if it comes here it has its fifth end which has phosphate here fifth carbon and this is the third carbon which has oh here so the phosphodiester bond will be formed between the phosphate of the new nucleotide and the oh of the existing nucleotide that means the new strand or the new nucleotide which is coming is getting added at the third end the reason why it always gets added at the third end is because at the third end there is a functional group that is oh now let us see the primer formation if this strand that is parent strand 3 5 we are talking of this strand if it has to synthesize a new dna where should the primer come the new strand which is going to come here the rna primer will have the fifth carbon free here because the new strand which is going to come here should be anti parallel so this end will be 5 and this end is going to be third that means here there is going to be oh this fits into what we were talking about right now new nucleotide if it comes here this is rna and if new nucleotide comes here it will come at the third end then again here then again here and new nucleotides will keep coming let us come to the other strand 
the two strands. We are talking of this one now. Which strand? We are talking of 5 dash, 3 dash parent strand. If we make a nuclear, this RNA primer here, then what should come in front of the 5 prime is 3 and what would come at the other end is 5. What is at 5? 5 has O P phosphate and this has OH. And we said the new nucleotide can come only at the functional group. That means here. But there is no DNA to give that complementary nucleotide here. So this position of primer is actually wrong. The primer should form at the base of the opened up DNA fragment. In this case, suppose we take only this opened up part. This end becomes fifth prime and if we are talking of this end, this becomes the third prime. And the RNA primer, if is formed here, the in front of three, it will have its fifth prime and the other end will have the third prime and third has the OH. So now the DNA nucleotide can come and bind here as well as here. So one thing which we have to remember is the primer is formed in front of the third end of the parent strand. If we are talking of this strand, the primer is in front of the third carbon of the parent strand. If we are talking of this opened up strand, the primer is again in front of the third end of the template DNA on which the new DNA is to be synthesized. And one more important thing that we have to remember is that the new DNA or the strand always grows from 5 prime towards 3 prime. This you can say is the most important thing and we have to strictly follow it because this is how the new DNA strand is going to get synthesized. This is true even for RNA. And the simple reason for this is that at the third end there is OH or functional group. So if anything new has to come, it can come and bind only at the third. So DNA strand is going to grow towards its third prime. Let us confirm it again from what we see here. If the strand grows here, the new one will come here. I'm going to erase it in a minute. This is going to be the fifth. This is going to be the third. So it is coming from five towards its third carbon or third. In this case also, this is five, this is three. Suppose a new nucleotide comes here. This is going to be the fifth. This is going to be the three. So it will again grow towards its third carbon. So let us erase this additional thing here. But we have to remember that primer is formed in front of the third end of the template strand or the parent strand. And the new DNA or RNA for that matter grows towards its third prime. That means the direction is going to be always five prime towards three prime. So these are first three steps that is activation of nucleotides, then opening up of the helix. First, the ORI site is recognized, that is the place from where the replication is going to originate. Then helicase, topoisomerase and single stranded, single strand stabilizing enzyme. They stabilize the helix, the two strands separated. This is what we see if it is a linear molecule, which is known as replication fork. Then primer formation. Primer is a small 7 to 10 nucleotide sequence, RNA nucleotide sequence. Now, the reason why this RNA is required, RNA and DNA bonding takes less time. That means as soon as it is formed, it will form these bonds here. So, there is a base and when the DNA nucleotides come here, they have two places to make bonds with. One with the DNA and second with the RNA. So, the two bonds which are formed, they are formed quickly as compared to the one which is formed directly with the DNA strand. So, this helps and this also, you know, we can uh, conclude or understand it using the example of a simple uh, painting on the wall 
when we make a wall made up of brick and we put the plaster which is made, made up of cement and if we have to apply paint on it we apply a primer first primer is the thing which is going to hold or it acts as a binding thing between the wall and the paint here also the primer is going to help in binding of DNA nucleotide which is going to come here with the DNA nucleotide which is already existing. So that is the main function of primer and after the DNA is formed this primer will get removed. So after step number three we are going to the next step where the new DNA is actually getting synthesized. That we will discuss in the next video.